It's Friday the 13th, and that could spell bad luck for either the St. Francis Lancers or the Archbishop Mini Monarchs from Higgins Field on the campus of St. Francis High School. KMVT Sports brings to you Blossom Valley Athletic League, Mount Hamilton Division Field Hockey, a big matchup between the Mini Monarchs and the St. Francis Lancers. Almost underway, there you see Justina Williams, head coach for Archbishop Mitty, first year coach. And her counterpart, there you see walking away from us, Kathy Lincoln, head coach for the Lancers. St. Francis comes in with a 7-0-2 overall record, as there's a better shot of Kathy. Standing still for us finally, thank you Kathy. And Mitty comes in with an overall record of 7 0 and 1. <coughs> Mentioned Justina Williams for Mitty, her first year as head coach of the Monarchs. Last year, she was an assistant coach for the field hockey team over at Stanford and also played at Stanford, I was told. Replacing last year's coach can't remember the coach's name from midi from last year but the mini coach going to grad school so that's why justine has taken over we are now underway here glad you can join us here kmvt bringing you exciting field hockey action st francis will be going starting off in the white tops going from our right to our left and Mitty of course in black going left to right. Well we have this opportunity let's run down the starting lineups. First of all for Archbishop Mitty at, at defense they'll have Katie Shunk at midfield Katrina Yondick over at midfield Kylie Schmidt at midfield Aaron Stapp at forward Marissa McNulty Janelle Rhodes at forward in goal will be Julia Scott Lucy Redman playing defense in midfield. Amy Williams along with Michelle Flattery at midfield as well. Aaron Barrera will round off the starting lineup for Archbishop Mitty. And for the Lancers, in goal will be senior number 46, Beth Haley. And the lineup goes as such. Number four, Gina DeMaestri. Number seven, Jenna Long. Number eight, Melissa, Melissa Martindale. Number 10, Michelle Lovejoy. Number 13, Stephanie Graytech. 14, Aaron Atkinson. 21, Tammy Shewer. 24, Teresa Wagner. 32, Lauren Follett. And number 33, Betsy Butterick. Our officials this afternoon on the near side will be Peter Ng. And on the far side, just barely making it in time, Cam Gill. Thirty minute halves here in field hockey. Into the third minute of play early on here. See next to Kathy Lincoln, her assistant coaches Molly Costello and Missy Wolf. St. Francis bench to our right, maybe to our left. Both teams coming in undefeated in the Mount Hamilton division. As tonight, uh, this afternoon's match will end the first half of the league season. Six teams in the league. And we'll get a chance to look at the standings a little on later in the broadcast. St. Francis and Mitty already facing each other once this season. That 
at the Davis tournament pa this past weekend. And the Lancers and the Monarchs finished with a 1-1 tie. And they played a two overtime, two five minute overtime periods. No one scored, so they ended up going to penalty shots where the Monarchs won that two to nothing. Monarch coach Justina Williams in her overall record has put down the Davis tournament record as well. We were told they were 15-0-1. However, I was told in that tournament they weren't playing regulation 30-minute halves, only 20-minute halves. So we haven't included that in the standings. But nonetheless, the standings that really count are the Blossom Valley Athletic League, Mount Hamilton Division, three divisions in the Blossom Valley Athletic League as that ball is rolled out. And Missy Wolf, assistant coach for the Lancers, will set that for Stephanie Graytech. Blossom Valley Athletic League mentioned three divisions, the Mount Hamilton division being the stronger division, the A division. Second tier would be the Santa Teresa, and third tier is the West Valley, as that is where the Los Altos Eagles reside, and they are defending West Valley division champions. St. Francis, this only being their third year of field hockey. And you gotta give them a lot of credit and a lot of credit to Kathy Lincoln and her assistants. That, as we get an early substitution here, Melissa Martindale comes out and Jacqueline Campy, senior forward number five in, bringing more speed to the Lancer offensive unit. Saw Campy on a beautiful give and go just the other week against Prospect. Got the long pass at midfield, just blew by the defense. And a nice centering pass for Gina DeMaestri who scored a goal. The Lancers last year were in the Santa Teresa division and they won that division easily. And the year before, they were in the West Valley. Well, being in their first year of existence in field hockey, CCS did not allow them to participate in any higher division. So the Lancers had to work their way up. I mean, even after winning the West Valley, Kathy Lincoln wanted to move up to the A-League in, in the Mount Hamilton, but they were not allowed. But after winning back-to-back division titles it looks like the Lancers are here to stay in the Mount Hamilton division it's going to be a physical game this afternoon and maybe with the first opportunity but a nice breakup by Teresa Wagner as Mitty almost had themselves an opportunity for a score and they will get the first corner albeit a short corner in the last KMVT broadcast St. Francis defeated Prospect 5 to nothing. And they basically had a 17-18 to 2 ratio in short corners. So the Lancers enjoying that advantage, but I don't think they'll have that much of an advantage here with Mitty. I think the referees will call this very close. Tight defense is expected. Both teams with very good team speed. 
on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. We have a nice crowd on hand. A lot of people coming out for this Friday the 13th matchup. Also, another St. Francis midi battle will be going on later tonight as the volleyball teams will match up, in which will be their third meeting of the year. St. Francis winning the first two meetings, a non-league match back September 14th here at St. Francis with a three-game win. Last week in St. Francis took out midi in the National Archbishop Midi Volleyball Tournament. St. Francis winning the semifinal in three. And tonight they'll finish off the home and home. So far, a lot of the action in midfield. Another whistle and a high ball called, and it'll be turned over to the Lancers. So we have an opportunity. Let's take a look at the Mount Hamilton Division standings. St. Francis and Mitty with a 3 0 and 1 record. St. Francis's tie came to Willow Glen 0 0 a week ago today. And Mitty tied Los Gatos 1 1 last week. And the unthinkable prospect who was a CCS finals last year, 0-4 in last place. In the 11th minute of play, still no one has come up with a big offensive threat. Tied at zero. Midi really hasn't been doing much scoring of late. If you're including league games, the only person really who's scoring is Flattery, Michelle Flattery, senior midfielder. She had the only goal in the game against St. Francis in the Davis tournament and had the goal that ended up beating Willow Glenn last week. Plus she had the tying goal against Los Gatos the game before. And as for the Lancers, their last league game was against Limbrook at Limbrook. Martindale, Butterick, and Baca with goals. The Maestri, Great Tech Long, and Wagner getting credited with assists. So the winner of this game will go into the second half of league in the driver's seat. A tie and a block by Beth Haley and I believe we're going to get our first short corner of the game and we will and that will go in favor of Mitty. The set by the Monarchs and a whistle and another corner. So so far Three corners for Mitty, one log, and this will be their second, second short one. And this will be taken by number nine, Kylie Schmidt. The set, and just outside the goal box. And St. Francis will get the free strike. So the first goal, very important. That ball is knocked down and right in front of the scoring circle by the Lancer defense, keeping Mitty outside of the zone. 
The Lancers scored first in that match at the Davis Tournament for the championship. But then Mitty countered back. Flattery scoring on the short corner. So long strike by Butterick will go out of bounds and roll to a fan. He stops the ball quickly. In the 14th minute of play, and Schmidt with a strike. Bounces close to the zone, and that will be not the way. Another whistle, and Mitty will get the free strike. Well, St. Francis in early season matches have, have played a lot of the match of their matches in the offensive zone. But Mitty giving them a stiff battle here. Long strike and Campy battling for the ball and a little trip up, but that will stay and go the Lancers' way. Long pass, Gina DeMaestri, and a whistle, and the ball turned back over to Archbishop Mitty. See Cam Gill in the background there in the aqua shirt. A far referee, and Peter Ng on our near side, and that ball rolls out. We have a substitution, number 15 will be coming in to the game. Lisa Ballen. And Stephanie Graytech with the strike. The field in good shape this afternoon. And there's a pass in just through the crease of the goal. No one there to pick up the ball for the Lancers. And Mitty right coming back the other way. Bouncing off of Butterick. Butterick scrambling, battling with, for the ball. Good battle there with Janelle Rodas. A lot of yelling, and we're on the bench side. You can imagine the yelling going on on the far side of the field where the fans are sitting. And you see there's a good turnout. These two teams will meet up again. I believe it's either at the end of the month or the first week in November. Seventeenth minute of play, about halfway through the first half. There is a scoreboard on the far right side of the field, but that is the unofficial clock. The official clock actually being kept right to the left of us at the scorer's table. And the scorekeeper giving the referee timely updates. Another whistle. And this will be Lancer Ball. Great tech again. Passing it over to the right side. Jenna Long getting double teamed, but still gets control of the ball and passes it forward. Gina DeMaestri didn't know where the ball was. Gina, stick it out. Break it down. Gina, break it down. And the defense for Archbishop Mady back on their toes. Mentioned team speed on both sides of the ball, so any fast breaks, highly unlikely. there would be any goals, you kind of figure it might come off a corner. Best scoring opportunity for both teams where they can set up their offense. There's a strike down the right side after Janelle Rodas. And she will now lead the free strike for Aaron Stapp. Passing it in the middle. Double team, whistle, and Monarch ball. Michelle Flatley with the pass, and it will be Lancer Ball. Good ball, good ball. 
There's a swing and a miss, and turned over. Michelle Lovejoy didn't hit the ball on her initial swing. But because she didn't make contact, she was able to hit the ball again. And once she mishit the ball, she was unable to hit it twice. Unlike a rebound in basketball, once you touch the ball, you must wait for someone else to touch it before you can. The ball goes right through the defense. Will roll out of bounds. Aaron Atkinson will chase it down. And St. Francis will set it for the free strike. 20th minute of, of play here in the first half. We're on Higgins Field, which if this was baseball season, the girls would be right in the outfield. This field also being used for soccer. You'll notice on the far left side that part of the field is played on the infield dirt of the baseball field. And the infield is roped off. Well, short corner number three. So far, this is Mitty's third short goal. Uh, corner, I mean. St. Francis has yet to have one. The set, the strike, and bounces off of Beth Haley, which that should be a long corner now for Mitty. And no, I guess it did not go off of uh, Beth Haley. So far, it looks like Mitty is dictating the pace of the game here. Both teams evenly matched. And there's a little turnaround. Jenna Long getting a little twisted there with Michelle Flatley. You can probably hear the coaches on both sides of the benches yelling out instructions. Both coaches very tense. All the coaches very tense. Don't want to fall behind in second place in the league. No overtime in field hockey in regulation. League play. Playoff for CCS only has the overtime because you do need a winner, of course, to advance in the playoffs. And the Lancers clear once again. Mitty trying to break through that stifling defense, but to no avail. High ball. Looked like a high stick, but no call. And cleared out to DeMastry, who will shoot it up field, but stopped again by Mitty. Aaron Stapp was there to knock the ball, and she'll take the free strike. Well, you can hear the coaches yelling, keep your sticks on the ground. And we have a timeout called by St. Francis. We are in the 23rd minute of play. 0-0 zero, zero is our score. I'm Lazarus Sargenides. I'm glad you can join us here on KNVT. And while we have this opportunity, let's tell you about our website. You can... Click your computer to www.mvkmvt.org and get all the latest information on KMVT sport, uh, sports, sporting events going on, what games will be covered, when they'll be aired. Also get information on what's going on in the world of KMVT, community television. So that once again, it's www.mvkmvt.org. So we start again. 23rd minute of play. Midi and St. Francis. And there's a high stick and maybe Midi ball. Mentioned now the field's in decent shape. 
got here an hour before the match and they were already mowing the lawn. It didn't look long though, but it took at least maybe quarter to a half an inch off. Making it more playable for the girls. So you see a lot better stick control. And there's Campy down the left side. You can see the speed by Campy. Look at her go. Campy looking for someone to set in the middle. Gets away from one defender. Gets double teamed now. Right now it's Butterick with the ball. Butterick in the zone. In the scoring zone. And I think we got our first corner for St. Francis. So the Lancers using that team speed. Gets that first corner. Jenna Long will take the strike. At the 24th minute of play. A high bounce, and that will go outside of the zone and will get turned over to Mitty. So the first scoring opportunity for St. Francis goes, goes for not. See a lot more double teaming in this game than in recent matches. That was Lovejoy passing it up to DeMaystry. DeMaystry through the middle. There's Wagner battling with Amy Williams. And is this corner number two for the Lancers? And it is. Second corner. First one wasn't that good of a pass. Let's see what Jenna Long can do here. Butterick striking right in the face. Let's see who that was. That was number 18, Lucy Redmond. See if we can take a look on replay. Lucy getting one right in the face. And here it is. A shot by Butterick. Yep, caught her right in the left cheek. But as a tough field hockey player, she shakes it off. And the Lancers even up the short corners at three apiece. Third opportunity here. The pass, and that is right in front of the goal. And no one can tap it in. Wow, that was close. Wagner with the shot. Let's see if we can see that on replay. See how close, boy, that was very close. Very close to a goal for the Lancers. Twenty-sixth minute of play. Just over four minutes left unofficially in the half. Now St. Francis in the last five minutes have applied most of the pressure. And the ball rolling to the infield dirt of the field. Wagner, high pass. And that will be a turnover to Mitty. And the ball must have gone underneath the fence on that shot as another ball has been thrown in from the scores table. Katie Shunk retrieving the ball. In tight, in tight. Two official balls Watch the one you're up. That a girl. at the scores table. I guess someone will have to go on the other side of the fence to retrieve the ball. Saw that happen in the match against Homestead last year. And unfortunately for our cameraman, Brent Stone, the Lancers threw in another ball, but it was a green ball, so it was hard for him to follow the ball. A green ball on green grass. But fortunately, the extra ball being red. And that will help everyone follow the ball. First long corner for the Lancers, and Teresa Wagner will take the strike off the infield dirt, kind of gets part of the dirt, didn't get a good shot. But Campy retrieving and goes out of bounds. And I think this will stay with the 
the Lancers and Wagner again with the shot. Better shot in the offensive zone and cleared again by the Monarchs. Mentioned an offensive zone. You see that semicircle as a pass through the middle. The goalie not there, but a Lancer wasn't there. Lovejoy got to the ball too late. And Mitty will take over. Wow, what an opportunity for the Lancers. Let's take a look on replay. Here we see the shot right through the zone and Lovejoy if she was about five feet closer probably would have had an opportunity to knock that ball in you're about a minute left in the half quick half doesn't feel like 30 minutes have gone by already But Mitty now with the late rush. And the whistle. And Mitty will set up again. Betsy Butterick now. Trying to clear it down to the Maestri. And a timeout now being called by Archbishop Mitty. We got about less than 30 seconds left. And I guess Justine Williams wants to set up her offense. There you see, that looks like some of the volleyball team. Kelly Corbett right there in the middle, Marissa Borelli joining her. Guess they're gonna take in the action here before they head down to the campus of Mitty off of Lawrence Expressway in San Jose. And the whistle and last 30 seconds or so of the half will roll off right here. Butterick with the long strike. Campy. Won't be able to get a decent shot off. And there we have the whistle, and we are at halftime. Archbishop Mitty and the St. Francis Lancers tied at zero. And we'll be back with the second half shortly. You're watching Blossom Valley Athletic League Mount Hamilton Division Volleyball right here on KMVT. Back here for the second half. Just about getting underway. Archbishop Mitty and St. Francis here on KMVT. There's the whistle. And the second half is underway. Lazarus well, Sargenides along with you here on KMVT. Glad you can join us. Mitty and St. Francis in a big Mount Hamilton division matchup. Well, you kind of figure most of the teams in this division will make the playoffs. There are six teams. There's a miss hit by Wagner, and ball will now get turned over to the Monarchs. Mitty now going from right to left. St. Francis from left to right. Nice stop by DeMaestri, sets it to Campy in the middle, but look at the defense for Mitty, the speed of Mitty's defense. Slowing down Campy, Casey Amuck, running Amuck. Wagner, good block, setting it in the middle past Campy, and back comes Mitty outside of the zone. Went to mention earlier talking about an offensive zone for field hockey. There's a semicircle. Can't remember exactly how many yards around the goal mouth. That the ball must be touched by an offensive player or going off somebody's stick. Basically, it must be touched in that semicircle before going in the goal. If any shot occurs outside that circle, 
and the ball rolls in without being touched, it will be nullified. There will be no goal. And that's how the Lancers had their potential winning goal against Willow Glen last week nullified. As everyone on the St. Francis bench thought that it did go off a stick. Referees confirmed, well, conferred, but to no avail, said that the ball was not touched. The Lancers lost out on a goal and ended up tying Willow Glen 0-0. Willow Glen zero zero. And Willow Glen, not a shabby team. So far they're tied for third with Los Gatos at 1-1-2 one, one, in the lead. St. Francis and Midi, 3-0-1. Kind of figure, the way I look at it, the top two teams that finish in the Mount Hamilton division just might end up being the number one and two seeds in CCS. The only other team that I can see being a number one or two seed might be the Live Oak Acorns from Morgan Hill. Campy double teamed again. Wagner comes out to a sister and a whistle. And let's see who gets control here. It'll be Archbishop Mitty. In the first half, the corners were even four apiece for each team, three short and one long. But Mitty had the early advantage, and then St. Francis came back with three short corners in the span of five minutes late in the first half, but couldn't capitalize. Mentioned there is no overtime, so if this game remains scoreless or a tie, 1 1, 2 2, whatever, will go down as a tie, which really wouldn't be too bad for either team. They would just further alienate themselves from the rest of the pack. which will even mean more importance on the game at Midi later on this season, where definitely if they face each other and they're still tied for first, the winner will move on. Last year, Midi and St. Francis both reached the CCS semifinals. St. Francis losing the prospect and Mitty losing to eventual CCS champion Los Gatos. And you see Los Gatos struggling in the first half of league play, 1-1-2. One, one, and, and prospect, dismal 0-4. Oh, Wagner, centering shot. Didn't get too far to Campy. But a short corner is called. So the Lancers will get their fourth short corner opportunity. Their first of the second half. Chen along, looking for the perfect centering pass. The set, great tech. Wagner, whistle. And the ball turns over to Mitty. Up past half, half midfield already. And nice job. Lauren Follett. Stealing it back to the Lancers. DeMastery battling. But turned over again. Annie Barrera. Well, the Archbishop Midi lineup, their whole roster, filled with juniors and seniors, only one sophomore. That's Cassie Williams, number 22. It's for the Lancers. About half the roster are seniors and the other half juniors. So an experienced team on both sides. Midi, especially, more juniors and seniors. 
So you look at whatever happens this year, next year both teams will still be very strong. As even though St. Francis was in the Santa Teresa division last year, coming into this year, four of the teams in this Mount Hamilton division were in the CCS semifinals. You got a good possibility, most likely St. Francis and Mitty, Willow Glen, Los Altos. My guess should make the playoffs. Got Live Oak, possibly Del Mar, Saratoga. Can't count out Los Altos. They're currently in first place of the West Valley Division. Last year, Los Altos having to face the Lancers in the first round of the playoffs. Well, the benches have quieted down just a little, but I'm sure they'll be whooping it up a little bit more if anyone gets a, another short corner opportunity. Hard to keep up the intensity, both teams back and forth. It's almost like a track meet. Ninth minute of play in the second half. There's Wagner. Whistle. Flatley will probably take the strike. Nice block by DeMaestri, but taken away back by Mitty. Campy. But Flatley beats her to the ball. That's Betsy Butterick. Juking and jiving around Katrina Bionic. And now to the near side here. Battle for the ball. And it stays with the Lancers. Wagner. Wagner trying to get one defender, but not by another. Nice job, Annie Barrera. Barrera, nice job of keeping the Lancers outside the offensive circle. Tammy Shure, whistle, Butterick with the strike. Down the field, will it get out of bounds? No! Wow, can't even place it any perfect. Can't be battling. And this might be a long corner. And Wagner will retrieve, and it will be a long corner for the Lancers. Six to four in favor of the Lancers. Corners, two to one for long, four to three for short. Campy. But look at that, just the middle of the, the offensive zone just totally stifling the offense. And short corner number five for the Lancers. We'll see what play Kathy Lincoln will put on. The pass going to the far side. Now towards the middle, blocked. And this will end up being a long corner for the Lancers. Michelle Lovejoy. Go back for this one. Block again right in front of the circle. Whistle. And Lancer ball again. Pass in the middle, but no Lancer there. Another whistle. Is there a lift call? Remain with Mitty. 
Chen along with the steal, the pass. No one there. Wagner battling, gets control. Pass, and it goes off a mini player. And that was Kylie Schmidt. So Wagner will take the strike. High pass, and that will turn the ball over. The game is Stephanie Graytech, who had a breather. And she's back in the game. Mitty will have the free strike. 14th minute of play. Whistle and another free strike for Mitty. Long pass. And the battle there is sure. Sure, no, fall it now after the ball. And we have a whistle and a short corner coming up for Archbishop Mitty, number four of the game in their first of the second half, coming in the 15th minute of play. Schmidt with the pass. High ball, that's a high stick, not called. Still played in front of the Lancer goal and a whistle. And another corner, but my goodness, that was a high stick and let's see on replay. No call. Above the knee. And Mitty with another short corner. And cleared by the Lancers. About the 19th minute of play. Both teams having their offensive strangled. Looks like teams, the two teams are, are playing not to make a mistake to lose the game. Or at this moment, a tie is almost as, as good as a win. Archbishop Mitty making their first appearance at St. Francis in field hockey and making this one a battle. Gray Tech, and that's knocked down. I believe that was McNulty. Now Campy losing control of the ball and quickly here come the Monarchs. Janelle Rodas with the quick speed to midfield but defenders right there to snuff out her fast break. Roughly 10 minutes left here in the match. Midi and St. Francis scoreless. And here comes the Lancers. Fast break to the middle. And goalie comes out and knocks the ball away. Lancer still with it. Butterick centering again. The pass blocked. What a fantastic block by Julia Scott. Well, that takes another look on replay. Fantastic block by Scott. Look at this. The pass. 
And I believe that was Jenna Long with the pass or with the shot. Well, there was another good opportunity for the Lancers. If that went through, and you know St. Francis would just sit and play defense. Well, this is a good, well, this does count for a league, though, but it's also a good practice situation for both teams to get themselves prepared for the playoffs as we have a timeout. Someone needs to tie their shoe, and we're having a sub. 12 coming out for 15. That's McNulty, and coming in is Lisa Ballon. There's the Maestri centering pass, but no one there. Jenna Long tracking the ball down, knocked away. Very good play by Lucy Redmond. And we'll set up a long corner, their fourth. The Lancer's fourth long corner of the afternoon. Nice pass to Maestri shot, but there was a whistle before the shot and you can tell by the way the girls are setting up a short corner, number seven for St. Francis. Seven to four in favor of short corners for the Lancers. Kratek sets, but bounces away. And Redmond makes sure as she knocks it away, but it's turned back over to the Lancers. And Butterick now with the centering pass. But with all those bodies in front of the goal, hard to get a decent shot on the stick. So many sticks flying around. Another whistle. Whistle on Michelle Flatley. And corner number eight. Short corner number eight for the Lancers. You gotta think one of these short corners is bound to go in for one of these teams. Another pass, Kratek sets. And the slow rotor roller by Butterick goes out, but a whistle on Amy Williams, and the Lancers will get another short corner, their ninth. There's another set. The pass behind the back. That was going for Lovejoy. But didn't fool the Monarchs. Well, you gotta wonder if this does end in a scoreless tie. And if they tie again at midi. Ball rolling just out of the reach of the Maestri. And a timeout being called. And I believe this is called by, I believe by Mitty. Short timeout, water break for both teams. As the Lancers now. And the Monarchs, mentioning if they play to a scoreless tie. Imagine the implications and the pressure. If this was a CCS match, either in the final or semifinal, I don't think these teams will match up in the quarterfinals as an early midseason prediction. Barring, of course, a major collapse by any one of the teams. I think the earliest these two teams might meet each other would be in the semifinals. But you hate for a match to end up on 
being decided by penalty strokes. And if there are penalty strokes, you're wondering how far away is the ball set? Well, it's set seven yards away. And if you think, oh, it's a piece of cake. Well, unlike soccer where you got a bigger ball and you can control it better with your foot, a small ball playing with a field hockey stick, if you don't hit it just right, really hard to control and aim where you're shooting. You almost think the goalie has the advantage. One wrong move or a bad control of the ball and the goalie can easily pounce on it. Well, last year you can say these teams lost in the semifinals maybe due to bad weather. Mitty played Los Gatos in the first game of a double header. And it wasn't raining as much. It was very cold, very cloudy. If anyone sneezed, it would have rained. It did rain a bit, but for the most part of the match, it was dry, or at least rain wise. But once their match was over and St. Francis and Prospect took the field, from the get-go, from warm-ups, it started coming down and never let up. And I should know, I was out there in the rain, so I totally got soaked myself. Had the playoffs at Los Gatos High School. In the past, playoffs used to be held at Stanford, but Stanford has as Coach Justina Williams knows, who has played there, changed from grass to turf. And the CCS did not want the girls playing on turf. Well, you don't blame them, really playing on grass the whole year and then you having to play the playoffs a semi-final or a final on turf is not the best for the girls if you're not used to it short corner number six for the monarchs the set the strike and block just outside the goal shot taken by flat flatly and a long corner now being set. Kylie with the pass and short corner number seven coming up for the Monarchs. Catching up to the Lancers. Seven short corners for Mitty, nine for St. Francis. Kylie, the set, flatly, controlling, controlling. Can't get the shot off. That was great, Tech. Another shot goes wide off of somebody's leg, and that's another short corner, long short corner, number eight. So Mitty now with the breaks late in the game. Another pass. Flat, well, not controllable. And that goes off of Yondik's foot. But a true press she is. She'll just run it off. Substitution coming in now. Marissa McNulty. Jenna Long. Trying to get it to Campy. Campy being hassled. Whistle and midi ball. Get 
Pereira. That's knocked by Wagner. Pereira now will be called for the violation and Wagner with the quick strike. But off a midi player. And back is Tammy Shore. Wagner trying to get around the player, but can't. Sure. Back, try to get it back to Wagner. In front of the benches now. Flatly. Flatly still trying to control, but. Well, you will retain possession. So Flatly now with the strike. Down the left side. Stay in bounds. And controlled by now St. Francis Wagner. Well, a whistle. Ball didn't go out of bounds, so a free strike for Mitty. And that one will go out of bounds, and it will be a St. Francis free strike. I believe. No, it must have gone off a of Lancer. There's another long corner. So the last five minutes or so played on the St. Francis defensive end. Maybe applying more pressure. There's a high ball. That's definitely high, and that will turn it over to the Lancers. Wagner. Wow, what a steal. Nice steal by Williams. Pushing it up. Will it go out of bounds? And it does. Rodas unable to track it down. All the passing lanes for both teams being cut off nicely. Both teams doing a good job on defense. There's DeMastry midfield. Up to Campy. Campy one on one. Tries to get around the player. She does. Can she center? Is tipped. And what do we got here? Ball back to the Monarchs. Well, Campy did a nice job of getting around Amy Williams. But no one was there for St. Francis for the centering pass. This is Butterick. She will center. No one there. Wagner. No. Yeah, there's a call. Midi ball. Not much time left here in the second half. Official time being kept at the score table. Midi, nice quick job of getting back on offense. Pass. Off a sure, no, fall it. That's fall it out there. Taking one for the team. And Gray Tech now. Well, you hear about 30 seconds left in the game. Not much time. Not much time for a late rush. Mitty now probably with the best chance to score in the offensive zone. You hear the players counting down. And that is it. Mitty and St. Francis. Round one of the Mount Hamilton Division Home and Home Series ends in a draw. Mitty and St. Francis scoreless. They will remain tied for first in the Mount Hamilton Division with a now similar record of three wins, no losses, and two ties. I'm sure Kathy Lincoln is happy with with that, of course, a win would have been more, more happy for the team, more enjoyable.
Now the Lancers and the Monarchs will look forward to their matchup late in the season. As that could decide the league championship and a possible number one seed in the CCS playoffs. Only one division for field hockey. So it's not like a team can go either Division One or Division Two. Well, and that will about do it for us here at St. Francis. I'd like to thank everyone who helped out on the broadcast. I'd like to thank everyone at St. Francis making it possible for the broadcast. I'd like to thank people at MIDI faxing us a roster. 0-0 zero, zero is your score. St. Francis and MIDI, you've been watching Field Hockey, Boston Valley Athletic League here on KMVT. I'm Lazarus Sargent Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.